Hi everyone, Ian here. So today I wanted to talk about uh, creating art and more specifically creating art using our Apple Silicon MacBooks um, using the new Stable Diffusion uh, AI uh, tool that everyone is talking about at the moment. And I've discovered a really simple way of being able to do this locally. We have all this GPU power on our M1 Pros and uh, it, we can put it to good use using these AI tools. Now, doing this using uh, text to image tools such as um, Stable Diffusion is no um, new thing. Uh, there's been a DALI, if you're aware of it, and there's been on the scene since the summer and has been uh, used profusely um, <laughs> to generate images. Um, but uh, this company, Stability AI, has released uh, Stable Diffusion uh, just a month ago. Public release of um, on the 22nd of August, so yeah, it's a little over a month ago now. Um, and this means that we can actually generate them tool using tools locally on our own machines. More recently, we've been able to do this using uh, simple tools using our Apple Macs, uh, specifically our Apple Silicon Macs. And uh, this is really great for us. We don't have to use a cloud tool. We don't have to use an API. We don't have to pay for doing it. We can actually do it all locally on our machines. So I wanted to show a couple of ways of doing this and hopefully get you excited about what the technology can do. So the first way to install this, uh, there's a really nice uh, tutorial on the state on the Replicate website that goes through how you can set this up if you are probably a little bit familiar with installing stuff on uh, within a Python environment, which uh, hopefully if you're a member of my channel or um, have visited here before, then you probably are. Um, this just involves installing some brew tools, uh, Python and a clone of a particular repo. It was a clone of the stable diffusion and um, then installing through a virtual env. Now that's great. Um, there's a couple of other tools as well that you can potentially use there. And that gets us right into all the, everything that we can do with Stable Diffusion. The tool that I've been using is a lot simpler than that. It's called Diffusion B. Um, and this is literally a GUI tool that you can install and one click install and get a very nice interface to uh, Stable Diffusion, pull down all the models that you'll need for using it locally. Um, and uh, just get started straight away. So I'm gonna pull that up. And what's nice about this is this has actually had an update uh, in the last day, which I'm looking forward to because previously it didn't allow us to um, have a history or a, a, a persistent history of the prompts that we were using and the um, the output that we were getting from this tool. So that's it started. If you do a first time install, it's going to be a lot longer because it has to download these models. That's about three, four gigabytes, I think, in total, because there's a few different files it needs to download. But it's dead simple. It's literally just run and off you go. Um, and we can get going. We can start entering um, prompts. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Let's do something crazy, an astronaut, a photograph of an astronaut riding a cat. Let's generate that. Now, this isn't instant. It takes some time locally on the M1 Pro. You're using um, everything. And I'm wondering if my audio is going to cut out here slightly because it's obviously going to be using the CPUs and the um, particularly the, core, uh, the GPU cores to their full extent, but no noise from um, our M1 Pro. And here we're only generating a single image. You can customize it to uh, generate multiple outputs at any given time. And we'll just see what this comes back with. So that's kind of crazy. <laughs> astronaut, that is an astronaut riding cat, but not what I was really going for, so maybe I'll change it to a giant cat. Maybe um, I will ask it to generate a few different images. 
Okay, so we've got a few images there. Um, the one that it seems to focus mo mostly on the astronaut side of things rather than the cat. We've got a giant cat, a portrait. I kind of like that. It's literally a portrait of an astronaut with a giant cat. Um, yeah, so uh, I, the thing I would say, having used OpenAI in the past, is that this, it takes a lot more kind of exploring. You're going to need to generate quite a few more results probably to get what you are after um nevertheless this is on your own machine and it's free to use however you want um it comes under a what type of it comes under a creative ml open rail m license which i cannot say i fully understand but um there you go the other thing here is that so we've got a couple of options at the top here we don't yet have image to image which allows you to feed in an image rather than a um, set some text to base your um, outputs off so yeah so um, we don't have a full kind of um, complement of comparable features against OpenAI but um, this is really really promising and and fun <laughs> especially as uh, we're able to do this locally on an m1 pro without having to buy an expensive crazy expensive graphics cards we just have to buy a crazy expensive mac instead um and i'd imagine this is probably going to be a sped up so this is probably about 30 seconds to get one image so it's probably just over a minute or so to get a full four output there um Let's go back and try some other things. Let's try a photograph of an astronaut driving a Tesla. I've done a couple of pictures with Teslas in space um, and it seemed to work quite well. So we'll try that. Okay, so we've got a few options there. Um, we've definitely got astronauts um, driving Teslas. I don't know what's going on here. This guy seems to have lost his hand on one side. It seems to have like a steering, of course, like a gear stick as a hand. Interesting, but this is what you get when you use a uh, AI tool to generate your images. Um, the advanced options allow you to change the size of the image, though if you're going to generate a larger image, it's obviously going to take longer. Um, the number of steps is the number of, I think, uh, how, much, how much denoising goes on. Um, I believe that's correct. And the guidance is how how strictly it adhere, adheres to the prompt that you set in. So you, whether you want to stick to it strictly, I think, is the lower number. Um, and if you want it to um, go wild, then a higher number. Um, so there's also this styles one, which allows you to choose from various styles that you could potentially use, which is kind of handy. Let's... Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to choose a few of these because uh, we can get a particular style. Let's do a HR Geiger um, version of this astronaut in space because we know he's uh, he's pretty good at um, generating astronauts in space imagery. Um, let's not do a photograph. So, yeah, here's my uh, results that I've got back from that. Um, I quite like this one where we've got some very abstract uh, astronauts that look like robots. We've even got, like, um, some crazy text that's been inserted as if they're saying something. Um, this is kind of the thing that I think is kind of interesting is that because this is leaning on imagery that is uh, scraped from the internet, as I understand it anyway, you're getting things that perhaps form part of these uh, other images online that you wouldn't necessarily have asked for. So here we didn't ask for any text, but we've got like gibberish, gobbledygook being inserted. On this one, you can see actually we've got like potentially like an email address of an artist there that is our <laughs> ML artist, our AI who's generated. Um, <laughs> look at this guy. He's just like merged with the uh, um, car itself. So like I said, it takes a little bit of exploring um, with these images to get it to work um, well. And so generally these guides, you need quite a few different guides. In fact, actually, if we look at um, 
in the prompt ideas, we get this art hub AI, um, which allows us to kind of look at other people's outputs and what the prompts were to generate them, which is really handy. Um, so we can generate a completely different type of image using some of these prompts, like instead of using photos, we could use oil on canvas, things like that. So I was having fun with matte paintings uh, last week. Um, in fact, actually, let's change it to an oil on canvas, generate that. So yeah, there you go. You can see what we've got in terms of difference in style there. So oil on canvas. This guy, I don't know what's going on there. He looks like uh, potentially one of the, it's like a Dalek, a guy, like the head Dalek from uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, so I've been really enjoying this uh, playing on my uh, M1 Pro. One thing to say is in terms of specs and things, it's not recommended that you go with an eight gigabyte um, M1, so if you're using an Air or a Mac Mini, they say it would take quite a long time to generate stuff on those machines. Um, but I've really enjoyed this and I just wanted to highlight it for you guys um, and point out like that you might be able to have some real fun using this quite simply on your uh, Apple Silicon Mac. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. I will speak to you soon in a new video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this. There's tons of different versions of Stable Diffusion coming out at the moment, all with their different, um, different models and features coming in. So I'm exploring them and having fun doing so. Um, but I'll see you soon in a future video. Okay, bye for now. Bye.